Hello everyone and welcome. You have reached this video by downloading the course notes to your device of choice and then clicking on the link you found in those course notes and it brought you to this video. I'm so grateful you're here. You could have chosen to be anywhere else, but you're here spending some of your time watching this video. Let's now move on to topic two. Let's get right started. Great, thank you so much. Um, so the topic today is major occupancies of a building. We'll deal with uh, figuring out the major occupancy of a building, but I guess first we should get to what is the occupancy of a building? Luckily for us, the building code actually has a whole portion of it that's dedicated to providing definitions. In fact, if you go to Division A, you will find in Article 1.4.1.2 a whole list of definitions. They are in alphabetical order, so all you have to do is just find the word occupancy or its definition. I put it on screen and so you can see what that definition is. But here's an interesting thing about the building code. Whenever you find a word in the building code that is italicized, right? So it's written at an angle. That means that that word is actually defined right here in Division B under Article 1.4.1.2. Cool, right? Okay, so go there right now. I'll wait for you while you pause the video. I'm not going to go anywhere. And go see under Division A in Volume 1, Article 1. 4.1.2 and see if you can find the same definition of occupancy. Let me read it for you. It basically says that occupancy refers to the use or the intended use of a building or part of that building for the shelter or support of persons, animals, or property. Okay. So that's basically, it refers to how that building is going to be used or how it is currently in use. And that's for both humans animals or property. So like storage, if you will. So what are the major occupancies? All right. In the building code, it turns out that the building code identifies six major occupancies and they're shown right here listed for you. Okay. Uh, but before that, I want to indicate that you're identified the groups of these occupancies as letters A through F and they are specifically assembly, institutional, residential, business and personal services, mercantile, and industrial. Okay, and each letter represents that specific type of occupancy. So for example, group E always refers to mercantile type buildings. They're labeled in letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. The groups and the, of these major occupancies are shown in table 3.1.2.1. Pause this video and go find this. It's under Division B, table 3.1.2.1. See if you can find this table, okay? I'll wait, I'm not going anywhere while you pause me. But as you can see in this table, those six groups some of them are furthermore divided into so-called divisions. So for example, group A is furthermore divided in divisions one, two, three, and four. So group A actually is A1, A2, A3, A4, okay? The long way of saying it is that assembly occupancies can be group A division one, group A division two, group A division three, group A division four but nobody really says that, okay? In our business, they say A1, A2, A3, A4, and that's how they write it, like you see on the screen. Same for B occupancies, okay? B occupancies are B1, B2, B3, furthermore sub subdivided, and industrial occupancies F are furthermore subdivided into F1, F2, F3, depending on the level of hazardness of that occupancy, okay? So please go to table 3.1.2.1, and check this out. Do it now. I don't mind if you pause the video. 
I'm not going to go anywhere until you unpause me. Just make sure that you know where to find this. And here's the cool thing. As of right now, you're ready to do question number one in homework set number one. You're going to find that at the same location where you found this set of course notes. So what I would propose is how about we do an example together? Let's do a simple example. We have here a four story building. The word story in building code speak is used to say the floor. Okay. You and I, when we speak regular English, we use the word story to indicate the floor levels that you stand on, sit on. Building code uses the word story, S-T-O-R-E-Y. So this is a four story building. The bottom story has an occupancy of office and restaurant, and the top three story has an occupancy of office. Okay. Now that translates into group D for the office portion and groups A2 for the, that portion of the bottom story for the restaurant. I'll get to in a moment as to how I was able to convert the word that defined that occupancy into the actual letter and number. Okay. So what is the major occupancy of this multi-story building? Well, the building code is actually very clear about this. It specifically addresses this under sentence 3.1.2.1.2 right here. Go check it out. I'll wait until you get there. This is found under Division B, Part 3, and it's sentence 3.1.2.1.2. What it says is basically that a building that is meant to have more than one major occupancy, like in this case, it has both D and A2, has to be classified according to all of those occupancies. So basically what that means is that you have to consider both the effects of the whole building being a D occupancy and the whole building being an A occupancy to figure out how that whole building is going to be affected. So what does that mean for us? Okay. So if you go and check out, for example, uh, under table, sorry, under article 3.1.3.1 to read more about that and how multiple occupancies affect uh, the fire separation between those occupancies, if you read that article, it will direct you to table 3.1.3.1 under division B. Check this out. This table is partially reproduced for you on the screen, but go find it right now in division three, division B part three of the building code. I'll wait while you pause me. Okay. So what it shows basically is a table that has rows and columns. And this table is titled major occupancy fire separation. It kind of looks like the board of a battleship game. What that means is that if you have two occupancies, like in our case, if you have B occupancy and A2 occupancy, you find them on the table, one for rows, one for columns, and then you look up where these two meet. And where they meet, that is the fire rating of the occupancy separation between these two. Okay, so whatever floor or wall is separating the D occupancy and the A2 occupancy must meet this specific fire separation, just like I showed you right now. So what does this mean, basically? That number, the one that you see there, refers to the fire separation in hours. It is a measure as a unit of time, in this case, hours, that gives an indication of how slowly the floor, the ceiling, the walls between A and D2, sorry, A2 and D occupancies have to burn. Okay. That little number, the, the exponent three, we'll get to that in a moment. So let me give you a bit more details as to what the content is of table 3.1.3.1 under division B of the Oterra building code. The numbers one, two, and three in that table, because you're looking at that table right now, they refer to the fire resistance rating in hours. Fire resistance rating is also short form, 
shortened as FRR. Okay, so one, two, or three refers to the number of hours, which is a measure of how slowly the floor or the wall or the ceiling separating those two occupancies have to burn. NA, that is N slash A, refers to not applicable. And what that means basically is that the two occupancies that you found that give you NA, that you've looked up in the table, either are not allowed to happen together, you cannot attach one to the other, or the fire rating is zero. And lastly, at the bottom of this table, you'll see there are notes one, two, three, and four. And those notes, you have to read them if there is a little exponent right next to the fire rating in the table, like we just saw. And they're referenced inside the table and they take you somewhere else. They point you somewhere else. So you must read these in their entirety. As of right now, you're ready to try question number two in homework set one. So give that a try. You're going to find the homework in the same location on Brightspace where you found these course notes and therefore linked to this video. Now, before we wrap it up, I want to talk a little bit about how I was able to come up with the fact that office was going to be a B occupancy and restaurant was supposed to be an A2 occupancies. How did I come up with that? Well, normally, based on what we've seen in the building code so far, you would say, well, okay, all I did was go to division B part three and looked up under table 3.2 sorry, 3.1.2.1, like I show you at the bottom of the screen. But that's not enough. I'm going to share with you a pro level tip, okay, which I want you to take note of pretty please. When you're looking at a specific occupancy, right, and it's called, I don't know, something like office or restaurant, in order to identify it as one of the many groups and division occupancies in this table, 3121, you also want to use Appendix A, which you find in Volume 2. See, Appendix A is set up in such a way that it looks exactly, almost exactly the same in layout as Division B of the Ontario Building Code. But here's the great thing. When you're reading various things under Division B, they're written in building code speak, right? So sometimes that can be a little difficult to understand. But if you go to Appendix A, it has those same uh, references, but they're explained in regular English. So in our case, as it relates to uh, 3.1.2.1, if you go to Appendix A and look that up, it's going to look like this, okay? It's going to look like A, 3.1.2.1, and the A is for Appendix A. But once you find it there, it's going to explain to you in plain English what that means. In fact, if you go even closer and look under Appendix A, under Sentence 3.1.2.1.1, it will list for each one of those occupancies, group and divisions, examples of it. Go look at it now, okay? Pause me and go check it out right now. I'm not going anywhere. Volume 2, Appendix A, look at sentence 3.1.2.11. Over two pages, you'll find that it provides multiple examples of various types of occupancies, so you don't have to guess. I'm going to put it even one step further. On Brightspace, you'll find that I gave you the scans, right? I scanned these two pages in Appendix A, so you know exactly where to find them, okay? Even more, let's step it up even more. If you don't add the appendix reference in your test or final exam in terms of how you obtain the major occupancy of something, your answer is wrong right? There are so many things that are impossible to get by only referencing table 3121. So for example, what is a dry cleaning establishment self-service? What is that occupancy? Okay. If you use the appendix, like I'm showing you here, 
you'll be able to figure that out. So go check out Appendix 1 and you're going to be golden. Okay? Now, that's it. We've reached the end of this topic. I want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate that you took the time for this. Have a lovely day and take care.